We are working on our formalized risks, but we actually have a um, an Excel spreadsheet that helps us analyze the oh, risks that come along with AI. Uh, but then separately, uh, so the next thing, right, that we actually brought through data governance was um, Tableau in the cloud, which offers AI, mm -hmm. so it's Pulse component. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the Risk Never Sleeps podcast, in which we learn about the people that are on the front lines delivering and protecting patient care. I'm Ed Gaudet, the host of our program, and today I am pleased to be joined by Andrea Steele, the AVP of Information Technology and Business Intelligence. Did I get that right? You did. Excellent. Yeah, awesome, it's a very awesome. long title. It's actually too <laughs> long for Oracle, and we had to pare it down. Oh, this is impressive. And you're at the Healthcare District of uh, Palm Beach County. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. So let's just start off, um, help listeners uh, understand a little bit more about your background, your role, and um, your organization. Sure. Thank you for having me on the podcast, yeah. Ed. Um, so a little bit about the Healthcare District of Palm Beach County. We uh, have been around for 30 plus years. We're the public safety net uh, healthcare system. And our motto is, we care for all. I started working here nine years ago uh, in corporate or in quality, and then moved over to corporate quality, uh, managing quality for our health centers, and then also you know grew into that larger role where I was also working for the rural hospital, our skilled nursing center. We have air and ground transportation, oh, wow. and then we have 170 public schools across the county where we staff the school nurses as well. It's so a lot of opportunities for both quality and IT, and it's only been about a year that I transitioned into my role in IT. I, I think I'm one of those folks that you call purple people who, you know, was identified by my business units as the person you go to to ask questions when IT is not getting back to you fast enough. And uh, just have grown into this role over time, starting with getting my um First certification as an EPIC clinical informaticist. Uh, that was in wow. 2021 when we Congratulations. Uh, went live. Yeah. Thanks. That's no small feat. <laughs> no, it was, uh, it, I actually had to take the class twice. It was a new language, right? Mm -hmm. Just like EPIC is learning a whole new language. And now I'm learning the language of cybersecurity. So uh, I'd like to think of myself as a linguist these days, but who knows? Uh, translating between business as well, I'm sure. Mostly. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yes, definitely translating, communicating between information technology and operations and making sure we're all speaking the same language. And if we're not on the same page, at least we're in the same book. Yeah. Yeah. A <laughs> tough job, obviously. And I'm sure you're you're busy these days, especially. Um, definitely. How did you get into healthcare? You know, I I would describe that to my family. My mom worked for a physical therapist uh, mm -hmm. for the last, or she's retired now, but she worked there for 10 plus years. My first job at 12 years old was doing laundry for the physical therapy office. I washed wow. and folded, you know, towels, sheets, pillowcases yes. uh, overnight. And then my mom would take them back to work with her the next morning as the office manager. And I think I just started my love there. My sister is also a APRN for a federally mm -hmm. qualified health center. So it's just part of our family, I think. It's in the family. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And people don't realize how critical laundry is. Um, if you don't have it, you can't run a hospital, can't run a sure. clinic. Yep. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's uh, people always think about risk on the technology side, but there's all these other services that are quote unquote critical functions to uh, Definitely. the operations. Yeah. So um, when you think about the next 12, 24 months, what are your top strategic initiatives? So for us here at the district, I would say it's really translating actually quality to IT. I've started in the last year by having our team conduct root cause analysis, but mm. the next phase would be implementing plan, do, check, act. So really like doing that whole process improvement cycle in each of our service lines. And then in addition to that, which is also no small feat. Uh, we also are trying to implement the scrum methodology. Oh, wow. So okay. 
our business intelligence department has been doing it now for a couple of months, maybe mm -hmm. the last six months. And it has really improved our delivery time to our operational stakeholders, but also helped kind of answer real questions in real time for the developers. So they're able to, you know, address roadblocks quickly and move forward with their jobs as well. And are you following the a pure agile process or have you modified? Trying it? to, but we're also oh. open to being flexible. We can actually mm -hmm. feed uh, the tickets from the manage engine system into Azure DevOps to sort of start the process and, you oh, know, cool. set up our actual, you know, two week sprints with uh, the business, the operational owners, right? So they tell us what the priority is and then we run. And do other organizations use Scrum and Agile or are you the first? Oh, I'm sure there are other organizations mm. who are using it. I don't know that they have historically linked it to their IT ticketing system the yeah. way that we are. So I'm pretty excited mm. about that. Mm. Yeah, I met within the organization. Are there other groups that use it? Oh, sorry. Um, no there problem. are our performance excellence team and our project mm. management office oh. are also using. Oh, cool. Scrum. Yep. So it sounds like that'll be a, sort of a best practice for the organization. Definitely. Over time. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, you. I I don't think many many health healthcare organizations are using. I know I know of a few, but um, yeah. it's a really good question to ask. Actually, I'm going to have to think yeah. about how I include that in the. Uh, we we have this benchmark study. I'm going to think about how I include that in the benchmark study. Um, cool. You know, as you think about those things that um, you use to help guide your overall programs, um, are you a NIST shop? Are you a NIST CSF shop? Are you a you are? We are. We're a NIST CSF shop. Yep. And are you looking at the CPGs, the cybersecurity performance goals? We are. Oh, yep. good, good, good. Excellent. Um, and so assuming like everybody else, you're probably also either thinking about or beginning to execute on some type of AI plan, policies, protocols, governance committee. Yes. So we had our one and only AI governance committee earlier this year, uh, and it then got integrated into our data governance committee. So we oh, had just one AI governance committee where we sort of, you know, talked about the lay of the land and also where we wanted to go, including implementation of DAX Copilot with mm -hmm. Epic and Copilot through Microsoft 365. And then now we talk about the AI components as a regular, you know, standing agenda item, part of our data governance, um, ongoing monthly meetings. I love that idea. And and so why did you decide, you know, what was sort of the impetus for putting it into data governance? I would say that uh, it's usually, at least from a legal and compliance concern, the concerns always come back to the data and yeah. the data integrity and, you know, where is it getting stored? So it just made sense. It's we didn't need to keep a separate committee, a governance committee going when we could just sort of integrate it with what we had already started. Got it. And how about other practices, other functions like risk analysis? And are you running, um, as you're bringing in AI type technologies or tools, do you have a formal risk analysis process as well for that or? We are working on our formalized risk, but we actually have a, um, an Excel spreadsheet that helps us analyze the oh, risks that come along with AI. Uh, but then separately, uh, so the next thing, right, that we actually brought through data governance was um, Tableau in the cloud, which offers AI, mm -hmm. so it's Pulse component. So that's the piece that I'm really excited about. We'll be able to take enterprise risk data, feed it into Tableau as we already do today, but then also do forecasting of our risk and maybe That's, even if we get super savvy down the line, maybe we can actually combine the enterprise risk data with our now data that we get from Cincinnati on each of our vendors. Um, so that's another just sort of aspect of some of the work that we've been doing. Mm -hmm. And we try to be a very data-driven organization, but sometimes being able to combine those different data sources can be a challenge, but right, right. we're working on it. It's good Excellent. to have dreams. Excellent. Yeah, no, it's exciting times. Yep. Um, what keeps you up at night? What keeps me up at night? Uh, honestly, it's uh, asset management and medical mm -hmm. device management as well. Keeping track yeah. of our inventory. 
Yeah. In, in, is med device managed by the biomed or the the, the, the bioengineer group? Or we do have do? a biomedical group, but they do not uh, currently have that cybersecurity component. So we're actually bringing on a third party vendor to do the cybersecurity upkeep. And uh, we'll have it integrated between IT security and biomed and have probably monthly meetings just to make sure that we're on the same page and tracking Excellent. everything appropriately. Excellent. All right. Yeah. Um, no, that's that's a really good overview. Um, so now as we kind of turn to you, the person, mm -hmm. <laughs> outside of your your day job, what are you most passionate about? What would you be doing if you weren't doing this this job? Oh, I would probably be hanging out with my kids, camping. Nice. We went on a really long road trip over the summer where we camped all over Northern California. We did oh. some gold panning for gold. That's a oh, fun thing for small cool. boys age almost seven and nine. Oh, uh, nice, nice. Right on a river. Uh, so we did, you know, some just sort of rafting down the river as well. Yeah. And yeah, we love to go, of course, to all the amusement parks, Legoland, Disneyland, all those things. But, um, but we like to spend time outside. Yeah. Uh, do, now, were you up at Big Sur or? No, we went oh. through Yosemite and oh, Yosemite. then okay. up over to Tahoe and then back down through Mammoth. Nice. Oh, so yeah. great. And then you, you live in California. I do. I live in Orange County, California, yeah, but right. in Silverado at the base of the Cleveland National Forest. So we have a creek out back. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> oh, it's great. Also have two chickens. Two cats and a dog. It's pretty exciting at our yeah, house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, <laughs> no, that's great. One of my my first trip uh, out of school um, was to L.A. to to uh, to Irvine actually for yeah. for a trade show. Yep. This is back in the eighties, and um, and I was a big Doors fan, and I remember just thinking, I need to get to Venice Beach. <laughs> oh yeah, Venice Beach is amazing. It's, it's so cool. cool. <laughs> yeah, I still go. I still anytime I'm in town, I I try to go because you know it's like a pilgrimage. It's like um, and I try to bring whoever I'm, who's with me. And typically, people have never been, so it's a yeah. it's kind of fun to watch their <laughs> their reaction to Venice because they've sure. heard about it but they've never been. And um, there's always something exciting to see there. It's for such sure. a great place. Yeah, that whole area, yep. Santa Monica, mm -hmm. Venice, yep. so wonderful. Um, okay, so if you could go back in time. Mm -hmm. What would you tell your 20 year old self? Yeah, you know, I'm glad that I got the questions in advance because I had to think about this one. <laughs> um, but truthfully, I think I would tell my 20 ish or so year old self just to believe in myself more, right? I don't need the external validation. Um, it's really about like trusting your gut and uh, being willing to make mistakes, learn from those mistakes. Uh, yeah. And I think I've had plenty of opportunities to make mistakes and then learn from them and believe in myself more. So yeah, if I yeah. could have just had the confidence that I have now at age 20, I think I'd be in a different Yeah. Place. That's a common answer. I, I've al I always, when I first thought of the question, I thought people are going to say, you know, invest in Microsoft or... <laughs> <laughs> which is also a good, good or advice, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, we often get that answer, uh, which is a really good answer. Um, sure. it sounds like you, you do like the outdoors. So I'm sure you like a little risk. Um, what's the riskiest thing you've ever done? You know, I would say skydiving, but oh, right. Right. Yes. right? But <laughs> honestly, it was probably riskier driving around in little micro buses in Guatemala and Mexico with my cousin. Uh, that oh. seems like much more dangerous actually than skydiving. We On were small packed into buses. Pieces of road and <laughs> Yes, with, and mountains you know, and... food and chickens on like these very small winding roads that are made out of dirt and you don't know if you're going to go off of a cliff. I think that was more dangerous, more risky. I would, I would agree. That's much more risky. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's controlled risk to jump out of a plane, believe it or not. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but the, the bus driver, you never know what you get. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Hardest lesson in your career. You know, I think this is just something that I'm still learning and it's probably also from going from leading a small team of eight to a now team of 50 people, right? 
And it's sort of that discrepancy between the desire to accomplish something versus the capacity to actually accomplish it. Mm. And and so you have desire, you have capacity, and then you maybe have capability mixed in with capacity and really being able to understand what is somebody's desire to get something done versus their actual knowledge, skills, and abilities to do it. Mm -hmm. And what are you doing, right, as a leader to remove roadblocks for them to be able to do what they need to do at the end of the day. And it plays out not only in work, it also plays out in personal life too, right? And so this is the thing that I've been just sort of thinking about over probably the last couple of months, that that disparity and kind of also just talking with people about like, how interested are you in doing this thing? And what do you know about it? Are you willing to learn about it or... Do you need, do we need to actually bring in somebody from the outside who's already an expert? And then, and then also I would say adding to that, it's also helping people be honest about where they're at and what their knowledge, skills, and capabilities are as mm, well. I love that answer. I I always, you know, early on, I, I, I realized I had this epiphany that it's, it's skill and desire. Those are the two levers that mm-hmm. you have. I mean, there's a lot of other yeah. things around it, but and um, you articulated that so well. And um, and it's also the things we don't do as leaders, like jump in and try to do it ourselves. Because sure. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, that delegation is so hard sometimes because, sure. it's, yeah, that's really good, really good, uh, good insight. Um, so um, I, I love music. I typically ask folks, um, you're on a yeah. desert island and you could take five records or five movies with you. What would you what would you bring? I would probably bring Odessa, uh, so in their In Return album, so that I could dance on that desert island. Okay, uh, that would okay. be nice. <laughs> it's like Burning Man and, on your island. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Similarly, probably Faithless. I like their uh, oh, introspective yeah. uh, album as well. Uh, and then for movies, I was just remembering this yesterday, that movie Feds from the 80s with the two women who wanted to become FBI agents. It's hilarious. You've got oh, I have to write Rebecca that down. DeBornay, she's, you know, ex-Marine. And then you have this other actress who is um, the smart one, right? So you have sort of that, the complementary, the physical, the brains and the brawn, right? And they had to work together to get through FBI Academy and work as a team, basically, to both accomplish their goals. I just remembered it yesterday, and I'm That's probably going to rewatch I, it this weekend. F E Z Z. F E D D S. Feds. Oh, okay. Feds. Yeah. Oh, got it. <laughs> Not Fez. <laughs> What's your favorite movie? Oh, I love Jaws. I love Apocalypse <laughs> Now. Uh, Star Wars. I'm a child of the seventies, so I tend mm-hmm. to gravitate to those Greece. I love Greece. Um, oh, me too. Good yeah, one. isn't it a great movie? It's such a great yeah. movie. It Anytime so it's on, good. I'll stop it. I turn it and I'll watch it. It's the same <laughs> with Jaws too. Like my wife's like, "Are oh, you watching Jaws again? What's wrong with you?" I'm like, I just can't not look. <laughs> it's, That's awesome. um. And Rebecca Demone wasn't she in uh, Risky Business? Mm-hmm. Ah. Could keep it in the the family here, the risky yeah. risk thing. Um, cool. Um, any um, any last advice you have to professionals that are you know just starting up or maybe just coming out of school and want to break into healthcare uh, and or cyber or IT? Let's see. Well, so breaking into healthcare, I would say you know be willing to start start small and learn, mm-hmm. right? And for cybersecurity, I feel like there's so much uh, free education out there these days. You can start to, you know, just go learn on even the size of websites and then, you know, bring that knowledge with you, right, to your interview process. And then you can also sort of think about the way that you are addressing IT security, even in your home, and bring that to an interview as well. Um 
So what we've also done here at the healthcare district is promote internally, right? So finding those folks on either the service desk or desktop engineer team who already have just sort of a mind for it or a knack for it or an interest in it, giving them the opportunity, right? Showing that desire, let them go take some courses yeah. through Pluralsight um, and then, you know, going ahead and interviewing them and seeing if they'll be a good fit and then moving them up in their career. It's been really successful for us. Yeah. There's so many areas to start in and mm -hmm. advance into over time, which Definitely. I don't think people think about. They think about cybersecurity as like this very technical complex. It is, but sure. you can also start small. You can start off as a risk assessor. De um, Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's really great advice. All right. Any any last any last um, thoughts or comments or insight to add before we uh, end? This has been terrific. No, no. I'm just curious what records you would bring to a desert island as well. Oh, records. Oh, music. Oh, well, I mentioned the Doors earlier, so uh, <laughs> probably a Doors record. Um, probably um, Soft Parade, Fetish, or Morrison Hotel, or Ellie Woman. I don't know. I love them all. <laughs> Oh, uh, <laughs> Grateful Dead. I'm a huge deadhead, so nice. I still follow them around. So <laughs> I was just nice. at the Sphere for three shows. Um, Very cool. In, Ve in Vegas in June. Yeah. So they're, and they're still rocking. It's, it's amazing. I love a stone. So maybe um, Sticky Fingers album or Exile on Main Street. So I'm, I'm an old time rocker, but I, but I love jazz and I, and I love, um, I love all sorts of music. So. Very um, cool. Yeah. No, thanks for asking me though. Nobody's asked me that. <laughs> sure. That's <laughs> great. Excellent. All right. So uh, again, thank you, Andrea, for, thank for you. joining us. This is Ed Gaudet from the Risk Never Sleeps podcast. And if you're on the front lines, protecting patient safety and delivering patient care, remember to stay vigilant because risk never sleeps. Mm -hmm.